Hello Zebra Herd, welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Today, there's a bunch going on. Of course, they have announced new DLC coming to the game later this year, and I figure that should be a great opportunity for us to catch a little bit up more with this main game. Of course, there's still a lot we can do, mostly things like completing the Pokedex, but in later today's episode, I do want to get through all the lessons. Whatever lessons we haven't completed, I definitely want to work on those, but there's still some Pokemon I do need to catch. Like, somewhere around here, I believe, is like a, a Glade, I think it is. We'll want to take a quick look at our Pokedex and really just sort of get an idea of what might be waiting for us out there. There are some things that we'll have to take up a different version for to get like the different starters and certain Pokemon we're missing, but there's some things we can also just evolve and find that way. Like, I think the evolution of like probably whatever Scatterbug is can be ob obtained. Evolution of Chansey. These are all just Pokemon that we haven't either run into or gotten the chance to evolve ourselves. So like Claude Sire for Wooper. So I'll, I'll have to make a little list, but Glade, yeah. Glade is around here somewhere. That could be the first one we're looking for. Obviously, finding Pokemon that are popping up on the map, map in the bottom right can take some time. So those are the things I just have to wait around for. What about you over here? This is Aksu. I already have that. But in the meantime, while we're waiting, we can definitely... Oh, wow. Okay. Do I have you? I don't. So let's try out for this guy. Let's just battle him to get started with some things here. And I don't know if I'll, I'll get the Pokedex fully completed by the time the DLC comes out, but I'll certainly try. If you clear your mind of all worldly thoughts, even fire will feel cool. I suppose so. It's all just perspective in a way. So you need the, the black belt. So let's see if their fighting is as good as their wisdom as we take on Metacham here. Let's see, what level are these Pokemon? So, decently high for it being a trainer battle. We'll just do Earth Power real quick with uh, Wink alone here. And a one-hit takedown is pretty good. I mean, we still have a 50 level lead on them, so it's not too surprising. But, there we go, we defeat the seed. And, let's see what they'll say. <laughs> clear your mind. I guess having a clear mind isn't always the easiest thing to maintain but I'm sure they can keep working on it. Snow still feels cold even if you clear your mind. What gives? All right, well, maybe it's more metaphor. All right, we'll take on some of these uh, Lit Leo, I think they're called, and their evolutions there. I don't wanna go too far. Like I said, I really wanna find this Pokemon. It would be a really nice one to get out of the way, so just gonna work on this for a bit. Of course, we'll keep getting experience for our whole team just by uh, defeating these Pokemon, though. So here's hoping I might just you know, spend a few minutes around here getting the sun. But yeah, you know, just little things like that with the Pokedex are what I'm after for right now. There's still a lot more to go beyond that, but also the trophies. Some of you tell me, told me about these. I forgot about these. Uh, congratulations, your Pokedex deck contains 10 volumes. In celebration of your achievement, here are three bags of Stardust. And then we also, of course, get uh, 20 volumes which is going to give us 10 Great Balls. I've been, I guess, needing to get these for a while. 30 volumes is gonna give us, of course, a Thunderstone. And then lastly, for 40 volumes, we have a group of 10 Ultra Balls. Oh no, there's more. Okay, so for 50 volumes, we have like 300, so this might take me a moment. We get five Experience Candies S. For 60, we get ourselves a Firestone. I think I have all the Evolution Stones, but maybe not. Uh, 70 volumes is gonna give us the 10 Net Balls. And then 80 volumes gives us what is this? Waterstone. Very cool. 90 will, of course, give us uh, 10 nest balls. 100 will give us, uh, what is it, 5 bags of star stardust. Some more experience candy here for 110 volumes. And then for 120, we get 10 quick balls, which I, I can really appreciate those. Oh, is this a dark stone for 130? Dusk stone. I think it's the same thing. Uh, 140 volumes, it gives us 10 dusk balls, too. Um... 150 volumes will give us the shiny stone, and then 160 volumes gives us three experience candies M. Wow, it's just really all, each 10 of them. There's been a lot waiting for us here. Um, 170 volumes gives us 10 dive balls. 180 gives us more stardust. This is a timer ball, right? Luxury ball, not quite. Um, more experience candy for 200. Which is good, we've been sort of running low on experience candy. 210 volumes will give us the Moonstone. And now this is the Timer Ball. Very nice. Oh, and we get one of these, this is like, not Stardust, but Star Pieces. And these are, what Pokeball are these? Fastball. What's the difference between this and a Quick Ball? Actually, I don't know if we've had any Fastballs. 250 volumes that will give us more Star Pieces. And then we get, some of these are really neat. I don't think I've ever seen these. Friend ball? I don't know. Huh. Uh, we also get a Dawnstone. And this is 
a level bar. I don't know, maybe I'm just misremembering, but a lot of those seem unfamiliar. 290 volumes will get us more experience candies, and we're making our way to 300. That'll get us another kind of Pokeball there that I'm very curious about, but we're currently at 291, so maybe we can make our way up some more of those soon enough. I'd be really happy to see that. Oh, like Lotus is snoozing right now. That's so cute. Um, What other Pokemon? Yeah, no, you can go for it. You go for it. There it is. Very cool. So I got to keep looking around. Soon enough, we'll find the Pokemon we're after. Also, I didn't notice that right over here, we do have another one of you. Here, let's go for this really quickly. I would like to battle this because the more of these coins we can get, that's another thing we're working on, is of course, evolving Gimme Ghoul. So I think battling you for now is probably the best thing we can do. It's only level 35, so one hit takedown should be in order. There it is. And I think that'll give us 99 of them, right? If I'm not mistaken, I sure hope so. Uh, we'll find out in just a moment. 50 of them, so you know, that's still stuff in the right direction, definitely what we're looking for, so I'm trying to get 999, that's what we need to evolve a Gimme Ghoul, which is pretty cool. Oh, look, there's a little Snom, so cute. So it looks like we're getting some different Pokemon popping up, but still not the Glade I'm after. <laughs> Sooner or later, right ears hoping. Oh no, oh, now I'm in trouble. We also run into this red Lycanroc, which I think we've caught, but there's like several different versions of the Lycan Rock. I always get mixed up which ones we have. Oh, this is a good time to also check details. The Fastball, a somewhat different Pokeball that is more effective when catching Pokemon that are usually very quick to run away. We also have the Friend Ball. Uh, makes wild Pokemon more friendly towards you immediately after it's caught. And then finally, the Level Ball. M becomes more effective the lower the level the Pokemon compared to your own Pokemon. That is super useful. I wish there was a way to duplicate Pokeballs, because we only got one of each. I thought we got 10 of each. Nope, so these are some really interesting, unique ones that I probably just want to keep for the novelty of them, and I actually want to use them. Anyways, we got our quick ball here for you, and I'm hoping it'll just be a straight catch, but mm, maybe not. Uh, we could maybe throw another one, but I think at this point I will just try to put them to sleep and use an Ultra Ball, because like I said, if we could just catch them, it technically says I have them catch, but like I said, there's multiple versions. Oh, uh, it doesn't, uh, okay, well, this might not go so well. <laughs> but I'll keep trying to catch them. Ah, oh, so unfortunately I knocked them out, that's okay. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I already have them. The Pokedex entry is what matters the most anyways, but hey, it's fine. We'll keep moving forward. We'll, we'll still, we're still trying to find this Glade. I don't know, it's a little, I, I'm not always the biggest fan of how this works where it says it's here, but it's not really here. So I just gotta keep looking over and over again in hopes that it eventually pops up. Okay, so I spent a good 10 minutes or so trying to find that Glade, didn't quite work. So what might be more time efficient is focusing on the Pokemon that we can get, and that's mostly gonna be left through evolutions. There's a lot of Pokemon that, you know, we, we've caught, of course, but we haven't quite evolved all their forms, so we haven't gotten all those Pokedex entries. And the first one really should be, I think, right over here, no, that's Sunkard, so that's a base one. Maybe Scatterbug, there's a lot of them I have to look and double check, but like, you know, we just ran into that Scatterbug before. What does Scatterbug need to evolve? I'm gonna look that up right now. It looks like it just needs to get from level nine to level, you know, or level, yeah, just has to get to level nine. So I don't know if we, if we currently have a Scatterbug. Let me take a quick look at that. We, we might have to access our Pokedex box, wherever I can do that, over here, boxes. And if we just take a look, I wish there was a way to maybe better organize this stuff, uh, but I guess I could search it. Here we go. Um, Pokemon species. Uh, I wish I could just type it in. Oh no, I can. Right here. No. Uh, never mind. Why can't I just type it in? I feel like that'd be so fast. Big like, boom, Scatterbug. I, I guess not though. They want to do it this way. Then we're doing it this way. Uh, <laughs> this feels so unproductive. There we go. Scatterbug. Now what? Search. Okay. That is the silliest way they could have done it, in my opinion. But somewhere in here, Scatterbug, they're all loading in uh, right up here. So I have a level six Scatterbug already. We're just gonna move that to maybe just over Winkalone. Oh, we'll get Winkalone back in here. It's in box one, I'll keep that in mind. But now, all I can do is go back to my bag, go to uh, Experience Candy. I could probably use a small one. And then I'll use like three of them. Let's see how much experience. It gets you up to level eight. So if I use just two more, I think that would be enough. There it is, level nine. So you should, whoa, we disappeared. But look at this, Scatterbug is gonna evolve. So we're getting some new Pokedex entries no matter what today. This is the first one. All right, whoa, this is, I don't really feel like we've seen this Pokemon at all. Our Scatterbug evolved in the Spupa. Very cool. 
So number 36, Spupa, the scatter dust Pokemon. Spupa doesn't live in a fixed location. It roams where it pleases across the fields and mountains, building up the energy it needs to evolve. Very, very cute, very, very cool. That's going straight into Pokedex, and of course that um, evolves into uh, the villain and also learn protect. Very cool stuff. So there's the first one we needed to tackle in today's episode when it comes to getting all of the Pokemon we can evolved. So going into our boxes again, I just wanna get Link Loan back where they should be, just like that. And maybe what I could do also, real quick, is catch a Scatterbug if I had the opportunity right here. I should likely just, you know, be able to catch it in one throw. That way we do have a Scatterbug just in case for whatever reason we need a Scatterbug but not a Pupa. And there we go, we're able to get the catch super easily. Awesome, so there's that out of the way. I do wanna see now then uh, just what else we need to catch and evolve or anything like that. We all get one experience each. So another one that we can do, there was one before here, Chansey needs a happiness level of 220 to evolve into Blissey. I don't really know what that entitles, like it entails. Uh, so I will have to try to figure that out and see how we raise the happiness, probably just by keeping them in our team and maybe giving them some food and stuff. But Wooper is pretty simple. If we get our Wooper and get it to level 20, it should evolve into Clod Sire. So we're really gonna be doing more of the same here. I could go to my box. I could um, find out where Cloud Sires. If I don't want to use as much experience candy, or right, where Wooper is, yeah, I'm looking for Wooper right now, so we can evolve it into Cloud Sire. I could also just bring this Pokemon to a new, more challenging area, fight some Pokemon there, and it should level up pretty quickly. So I'm at the very northwest part of the map where we do have, oh, give me a cool coin, I'll take that, but also some much higher level Pokemon. I have Wooper over in my team over Oinkalone. So if we just hop on to our buddy here, and I just, you know, run around, try to find some Pokemon to take on. That should work out pretty well. I do also have um, Brave Bird. That's cool, and whoa! We get Velooza, is that a, I don't know, whoa, but Velooza's moving. This isn't a shiny Velooza, is it? I forget what colors it's supposed to be. Um, that nah, seems normal. Okay, well I didn't want to fight it with Wooper. Uh, this is maybe not a good idea. Let's try to run really quickly. You couldn't get away, oh no. Please don't tell me Wooper's gonna faint right away. Okay, well now I feel silly. <laughs> okay, so, we're not gonna do it that way. Instead, we'll just, you know, toss out stuff like this. There we go, much better. Now we can fight some Pokemon around here, and easily you can see Whoopers jumping up in levels. So that's exactly what we were after. We got a cute little Bleasel over here. I like to deal with you, just like that. The Howlucha. But every time we fight a Pokemon here, you can see we're getting some good experience out of it. Enough so that Whoopers getting a level up every time. Now I'm sure after a few moments here, that's not gonna be quite the case, but right now it's working pretty well. Oh, do we have Gyarados? We have Gyarados, okay, that's good. What other Pokemon do we have out this way? I think we have all these, but this is, you know, good stuff for, uh... oh no, Nascarada got too hurt there, okay. Good to know. Uh, maybe instead we should do I guess I could try, uh, well, if we're going against the water types here. No, 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 wrong button. Uh, make lead Pokemon, I'll also auto heal you. That should be a bit better. I didn't wanna, no, I did the wrong one. Oh my goodness. Oh well, eventually I'll keep leveling up Wooper here. Soon enough, we'll get it evolved. Okay, it looks like Wooper's at level 19 here. If we take out a few more, we're definitely getting there. Okay, whoa, these guys move so fast. But attacking them directly is fine too because if we can just get rid of them super fast, it does enough damage that we, we get a one-hit takedown and we get extra experience for it. I, you are moving backwards for some reason. That was funny looking. There we go. So super effective. Uh, a lot more experience in level 21. I think they jumped up two levels there. Wooper learned Yawn and more importantly for this situation, here we go. In the water, what? Wooper is evolving. So cute, oh my goodness, that big smile. Well, as you can see, Wooper is gonna evolve into Clod Sire. Very cool. So Clod Sire is a spiny fish Pokemon, a poison ground type. It lives at the bottom of ponds and swamps. It will carry Wooper on its back and ferry them across water from one shore to the other. So adorable, and they weigh 500 pounds. Boom, that goes into slot number 54. We still have so much more. They wanna learn the move Amnesia. Uh, I'm just gonna say keep current moves because this will not be a mainstay Pokemon for me, so I'm just not gonna work through all that time. But we're gonna move to our next Pokemon now. What could it be? 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do is evolve our Rot right over this way. We have ourselves a Rot that can be evolved into a Curlia. Now, to get Gallade, what we would need to do if we can't just find a Gallade to catch is that we can find a male Rot or a Curlia. This one's female, so that won't quite work. But at some point we can do that. But for right now, we're just going to move you into our box over Claude Sire um, and just try to get you to level 20. That should be enough for at least that evolution. So we're at least one step closer, you know? So don't have the same thing we did with Whooper. We need to run around here, beat up some more Pokemon, and hopefully along the way, get the experience we need. So I'm slowly getting Rots up in level. It's at level 12 right now. But you know what would help a lot is a trainer battle where we have this trainer waiting for us. Ooh, oh wow. What's going on? I spent too long crunched down sneaking through the tall grass. Now my back's killing me. That's not good. Maybe you just have to lay down for a little bit, just like flat on your back. You're judged by Natalia the student. And they are sending out Doxbun. Oh, we know all about this Pokemon. We have one ourselves. Very welcome part of our team. Let's just go ahead and do a discharge here. We'll just try to outmuscle you. And that's gonna work just fine. I don't know how many Pokemon uh, Natalia has here, but we'll find out in just a moment. That's it. Okay, now I'll jump uh, Rots up a few more levels. Once you learn to move Teleport. Like I said, I'm gonna pass on moves for right now because we can always do that, remembering moves. If Pokemon keep, skip learning moves or forget all moves, they can learn them again. Open the main menu, select a Pokemon, then select Check Summary. On the status screen, go to the Moves and Stats tab to check your Pokemon's moves and help it remember some. I think we already knew that, but it's very weird that it's telling us this that far in. Either way, we defeated Natalia the Student. I wonder if I could have won if my back wasn't acting up like this. Uh, maybe. You can get close to a wild Pokemon without them noticing if you crouch nice and low, but your back might regret it. <laughs> gotcha, maybe some exercises can, can help with that. But in the meantime, let's keep running around. I need to level up more of these Pokemon and uh, just see what else, you know, extra experience we can get here. We're so close to getting Ross where we need them. Okay, we're almost there. There it is, level 20 for Rots. I think that'll be enough that if we call you back, maybe? Right, I think it's supposed to be level 20. Huh. Okay, we'll let you finish all this and maybe once you come back or something. I really don't know. Okay, no, no, no. Here, let's see for ourselves. If we switch over, maybe at this point I'll just use some experience candy on Rots to uh, get it to the next level. Use item on rots. We'll just use, well, uh, three of them should be enough. No, it's not, okay. Uh, maybe I need to use the S, that's okay. Use four of those. There it is, level 22 now. Wants to learn to move life to Once again, we're just gonna skip this up for the sake of time. But here we go, now it's evolving. Very cool. So what, rots is evolving. Here we go. And there we have it, another entry to our Pokedex. This is Curlia. Number 63, Curlia is the emotion Pokemon, the psychic fairy type. The cheerful spirit of its trainer gives it energy for its psycho psychokinetic power. It spins and dances when happy. Cool, well, we're just gonna put that right there. So we're still looking for a male version of Rots or Curlia, so next time we run into one, we'll definitely have to try to fight it and see more of its details. Well, actually, can we just ever Zoom in and look at the gender. No, we can't. So yeah, it's something we'll have to try to fight them. But now we gotta look at our next step in the Pokedex. What else can we maybe evolve? So the next Pokemon we're gonna try to evolve is Tandem Mouse, and this one's a little bit complicated and weird. Uh, basically, it just needs to be in our party at level 25 or above, and I'm pretty sure it's sort of random at that point onward. It might not evolve straight away. So we're just gonna focus on getting Tandem Mouse in our, our bag, or not our bag, our, our team. So uh, we'll have to go to the boxes for that, of course. Um, switch out Curlia for our Pokemon that we switched them out for, which was not Sylveon, where was it? Uh, here we go, Oink alone. Move to over Curlia, and then we'll have to try to find wherever we have Tandem House. Okay, so what I decided to do actually was get a full party of everything except for Palmot being Pokemon that need to evolve. We have Steenie who needs to be level 20 where they'll learn Stomp, and then if they level up again, they'll evolve. Um, we have Tandem Mouse, which I've already explained. 
Smoliv get evolves at level 25, and then again at level 35. Both of those we do not have. Coracle evolves at level 34, and Stravia evolves at level 34. As you can see, it's already level 35, so if we level it up once. But actually, the thing it evolves into is right over here, so I guess we'll see which one ends up happening first. But we'll go for you, and we'll just start beating up some Pokemon as we normally do, see what kind of experience we get out of it, and see what kind of level ups can happen from it. So here's hoping it all goes well. But, you know, we'll just try our best and have some fun around here. Uh, Palmat will get some good experience from it too, which is always good. So far, it's, it's not the biggest ton. If you if you attack the same Pokemon over and over again, it seems like it does less experience each time, but we'll just have to wait and see. But it looks like a small need to be level 25. Some of these are more of a trip than others in some ways, in terms of how many levels we need to get. But I'm just gonna keep chipping away at this now. It's our next goal, just to get this done. But I figure, you know, we'll keep looking around as we're trying to find new stuff. If we run into any new trainers, I could definitely try that, but it could be a bit risky. Um, not a new trainer that we've taken them on before, but there's a Bronzong we can throw our Pokemon at. Very cool. And the Houndstone and all these enemies can be pretty cool to take on, so that seems good. But uh, yeah, while we're doing this, obviously, I'm hoping that in these upcoming episodes, we can improve and grow our Pokedex farther and farther. I will be trying to get a full Pokedex, but I can't really guarantee it. Or sometimes it just takes a lot of time and grinding. More than that, I need to get a, you know the other version of the game and get Pokemon from that one and transfer it over, and that's where it becomes a little bit complicated. But I think there's ways to you know, trade online and stuff, so maybe I'll look into that soon. But um, for right now, there's Pokemon we do have, like the ones in our, our party that can just be evolved um, just by playing it. So I'm focusing on those first, but I am very much so looking forward to the new DLC. It looks like a blast. There's new characters in it. Um, so it yeah, will definitely be playing that when it comes out later this year. So definitely stay tuned for it if that's, you know, something you're interested in, which I assume if you're watching this, you'll want to watch that too. But, uh, is there any kind of Pokemon around here? I don't think so. So I guess we'll just keep looking around. I don't want to go too far off because this is where the Pokemon get to be lower leveled. But, uh, I do remember there being, whoa, look at you guys just chilling out in this little pond. <laughs> Talk about a big fish in a small pond that's leaving the small pond. Yeah, there's a uh, Vaporeon in there, which I think we've fought that one before. Maybe I'll go for it again. These guys are still level 55, so that's nice. Uh, the Donzozos and stuff. I heard a Gimme Ghoul, and I caught a Gimme Ghoul. There you go. Uh, maybe we'll just fight this thing. I mean, I think we have before, so I don't really necessarily need it, but I am a little bit curious to see what it's gonna be. Um, it's gonna be ice, which, or is it, I always see that, I think it's ice. No, it's just water, it's just a water, so we should be fine with it. Maybe this will give me a lot of extra experience. Because if we already have Vaporeon caught, I really don't need anything else from it, so we'll just discharge. And that'll do a ton of damage to you, enough to break your terrestrialization. And, We'll just battle you again. There we go. So that should be some good experience, I think, for everybody. Ooh, thousands of experience, definitely. So getting us a lot closer to what we want to be. Um, once again, I'm just going to skip these because if not, the episode gets a lot longer. But there is at least one evolution there, and of course, it's going to be Staravia evolving. Here we go. So this is definitely a cool one to get. We'll see for ourselves. Staravia evolves into. Staraptor. This is definitely a Pokemon we've run into a lot, but now we actually got it registered into our own Pokedex. Number 99, Staraptor, the predator Pokemon, is a normal flying type. Who would have guessed? It never stops attacking, even if it is injured. It fusses over the shape of its comb. Aw. Well, there we go. We got that there. Pretty cool to find it. And Staraptor wants to learn to move close combat, maybe some other time. And I think that there aren't any other evolutions right now, but we can just keep throwing out Palma and damage more of these guys. These big guys should give us some good experience, right? Um, yeah, two or 300 each. So we're gonna get 300 for that, 600 for Palma. That's always good. This is definitely a nice way to level up Pokemon. So many different colors of Tatsugiri here, but uh, we can get them. Not as much experience for them, but you, you, you can see the progress being made, which is great. And as I've been wandering around, it looks like right over here, we have ourselves another trainer. What if I put the camera here? Oh, are they a photographer? That'd be cool. I'm actually a singer, see? I came out here to do a scout, to scout a location for my next music video. Well, that's very interesting. Hope it goes well, but for right now, I guess we have the battle. Yaiza the model. 
and they're sending out Kragonaw. All right, well, I hope this is something I can handle with the Pokemon I currently have, Palmot, because if not, I'm in a little bit of trouble, but right now we can do close combat. There we go. I didn't really think too much about the fact that I have so many low level Pokemon with us, but the extra experience I can get from them here could be huge. We'll just have to wait and see but right now. Um, there's that. Get a lot of experience there, so we might get a couple of evolutions soon enough. They're sending out Frozmoth next. I think Palmot will be fine against Frozmoth. It is technically flying ice, right? Uh, no, okay, so we'll just do discharge. We'll see what ends up happening. I mean, I might be, isn't ice good against lightning? Or at least electric isn't very good against ice. Something like that, I can't quite remember right now. But there we go, some more level ups. That is definitely gonna lead to some evolution soon enough. Um, yes, we do need Steeny to learn Stomp. I think that was, uh, yeah, okay. So we'll just put it over Flail. Doesn't matter too much. We need Steeny to level up with Stomp learned to get the evolution. All right, very cool. And we don't need to worry about Play Wrath. Okay, now this thing up Cloyster will definitely keep our current Pokemon because we can just use um, that same electric move to do a ton of damage. Yep, this should be nice and easy. All right, so with Cloyster fainted, that should be this battle one. And there it is. So look at all this extra experience coming in. We are due for a couple of evolutions there. Um, I don't need to learn seed bombs. I'm gonna pass through that. And you defeated the eyes in the model. All right, very cool. I got beat by some, some nobody. <laughs> well, that's not very nice. I mean, we're quite popular at this point. And oh, look at this. What Steenie's evolving. So this is a very exciting one to be able to get some more of these out of the way. Steenie evolves into, of course, Serena. And number 83, Serena, the fruit Pokemon is a grass type. This Pokemon launches fierce yet elegant kicks with its long slender legs. It views Quaquavel as its rival. Huh, interesting. So we can put that there in 83. We still need to find the original Boon Suite. Um, Trap Kick. Once again, I'm just not gonna worry about it right now. But um, at some point, definitely we gotta learn Trop Kick. But Smoliv is evolving, it's so cute. All right. So Smoliv reached level 25. So it evolves into the ever so adorable. We really haven't seen this one too much. This is Dolive. Number 85, Dolive is an olive Pokemon, a grass normal type. It basks in the sun to its heart content until the fruits on its head ripen. After that, Dolive departs from human settlements and goes on a journey. Wow, very cool. So there we go. We still need to evolve that one more time, so we're keeping it in our party for sure. But that's it. So let's go ahead and talk to you again just to see what else you have to say. That's it, we're definitely not filming here. I can't even stand here without remembering I that I lost a battle to someone like you. She's not the most nice person, is she? All right then, so with that being said, oh no, before you try to go for me, I'll try to find whatever Pokemon we still need to evolve here. Because there's there's still, oh and Mousehold evolved. Yeah, Mousehold does not really I don't know if it has a Pokedex entry. It's so odd, right? So I think I'll go check that right now. Does Mouse Hold get added to our Pokedex in that way? That should be way down here. Yeah, it does. It's very, wait, where'd it go? Uh, I'm a little confused. Is it farther down? Why did it switch like that? I think maybe I just went too far. Huh, that was weird. Uh, right here. No, that's, what, that's Psyduck, what, what is it doing? Okay, mouse hold right here. Yeah, if, I don't know if it has, it does have a different description to it. Number 72, mouse hold. Family Pokemon is a normal type, a family of four. Apparently there's a chance it could be a family of five as well. The larger pair protects the little ones during battles. When facing strong opponents, the whole group will join in on the fight. Very cool. So there we go, I'm glad we got mouse hold as well. So technically three evolutions in that fight, pretty productive. Okay, I set up a little bit of an updated team. Flaffy needs to get to level 30. Shroomish needs to get to level 30 as well. And then uh, Gabite down here needs to get to level 40. So that one's a bit of a jump. But these other two, we should be able to work on them a little bit more as we continue to adventure around. And we'll get there eventually, hopefully. <laughs> it's taking some time and there's some other Pokemon we can work on too soon that aren't evolutions, but instead I might just like have to give them a Dark Stone or something like that. I think there's one that's like that for sure. So we'll definitely just gotta keep at it. Um, and soon enough, we'll get there.
Okay, I don't know if it has to be a battle or not that has to go through here for an evolution account, but we should have Karka. Whoa, this is a Zoroark, I didn't realize. I will use close combat again, so that should be good enough. But I think I should have enough to get Karkal evolved here. So we'll see for ourselves once we just defeat Zoroark here. Lots of extra experience for everybody. That should be at least two evolutions, right? Uh, Shroomish wants to learn to move Giga Drain. Once again, we're just gonna skip through. But Karkal, Stealth Rock, I don't care. Here we go. There's gotta be some kind of evolution first for Flaffy. Flaffy is evolving. <laughs> so cute. So what is this cute Pokemon going to involve it into? We're gonna find out in just a moment. It is the very cool uh, Ampharos. I love it. So number 103, Ampharos is the light Pokemon, electric type. When it gets dark, the light from its bright shiny tail can be seen from far away on the ocean's surface. That is so neat. So there we go. That's gonna go right there. So I guess it's like a little lighthouse Pokemon. Thunder Punch, huh? Well, since they're learning all this, we can always go and access these again later. So look at this. Shroomish is also evolving. Did it hit level 30? I thought it was level 30 then. I'm not sure. But either way, it's evolving into the very cool, uh, what is this called? Breloom. Number 107, Breloom, the mushroom Pokemon, is a grass fighting type. The seeds on its tail are made from toxic spores. It knocks out foes with quick, virtually invisible punches. Would there really be punches if they have little pincers? I'm not sure. Uh, but there is that done. Breloom wants to learn Mach Punch, but once again, it's gonna take a skip for now. But we have one last evolution ready and waiting for us. Karkal is evolving. Here we go. And Karkal, of course, turns into Colossal, very cool. Giant Pokemon here, number 93. Colossal is a cold Pokemon, a rock fire type. It's gentle, usually, but fearsome when angered. With a body that burns over 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, it crushes foes and then turns them to ash. All right, so boom, three more Pokemon added to the Pokedex with those evolutions. Really happy to see it, so yeah, those can go away and we can get back to what we're doing. So I definitely have to switch out some Pokemon, but one thing I think I'll do is that I will go to our bag. I think for a good bite, I'm just gonna give them experience candy because getting them all the way to level 48, so that'd be 16 more levels here, is gonna be a bit exhaustive. Let's go and see if we can't get any experience candy, even if it's some of our larger stuff. We have 65 experience candy at. We can, we can make some use of that. So let's go ahead and give them like 20 of it and see what level that gets them to. Oh, that we yeah, okay. For a second, I thought I used it on the wrong Pokemon. So I got them to level 43. Um, so that's most of it. They're just five more levels. Hold on. Okay, they're learning moves. Gotcha. Okay, go back to the bag. Go to. I didn't mean to back out of all that. Where was it? Right here. Okay, experience. Can you use this item? Back on Bite. Let's just do another 15 or so. And I can see level 49, that should be perfect. Here we go, evolution time. All right, so from Gabite to, of course, this one's pretty common, Garchomp. Very popular Pokemon. So awesome. Congratulations, your Gabite evolved into Garchomp. Number 128, Garchomp. The mock Pokemon is a dragon ground type. The protuberances on its head serve as sensors. It can even detect distant prey. So cool. It goes right there, and things are going pretty nice. So we'll skip out on all this for now, but I think at this point we can reorder some of our team again so that we can figure out what needs to be evolved next. Okay, so I think we have the last set of Pokemon I'm going to try to evolve in today's episode before we go to the Academy and work on some things there, but we have Winkle, Fracture, Dalive, Barboach, and Grimer. Uh, Winkle needs to get to level 25, Fracture needs to get all the way up to level 48. Dalv needs to get to level 35. Uh, Barboach level 30. And then Grimer level 38. So some of these might happen sooner rather than later, but more of the same now, just throwing out Pokemon, fighting them, and getting some more experience for it. Maybe I can move to a different location. I am getting a little burnt out on this one. Whoa, uh, lots of enemies jumping on us here. Which button is the map? So many buttons are pressed, and none of them seem to be the right one. We need to go somewhere else. So let's just try on this coast now, that might be fun. So yeah, let's try the North Province Area 1. Okay, this Lycanroc, I'm almost certain we have not caught before. This is some kind of sunset Lycanroc. This orange color looks totally new to me, so we're just gonna throw 
you know, a quick ball and see if I can get an easy catch. Yes, critical. This is so neat to me. So we'll go ahead and get that catch. Maybe it's something different. I'm not quite sure, but it looked new. So I might as well get a lot of levels for Wingle there. Wingle learned Supersonic. Um, I'm gonna skip that. But let's see this thing. Does it have any kind of specific thing with Pokemon Dusk Form? Very cool. I'm pretty sure we didn't have the Dusk Form. So now we do. Looks good. Yeah, I'm just gonna sort of keep up with this stuff in this area. So far, just beating up Pokemon, getting experience. But uh, over time, maybe we can uh, get those level ups without it being too much of an issue. We get a Tanga Berry there. I think if we keep going north, the Pokemon will get a little bit higher level. Here's hoping at least. I have fought this trainer, so I can just focus on whatever Pokemon are nearby. Or, or not. Come on, Palma, you got it. <laughs> there it is. Also, I didn't really notice it before, but Fracture's already past level 48, so maybe if we were able to get into a battle, Fracture would just evolve? I'm not sure. Okay, let's just try close combat against this Ndidi. If we can get a quick defeat on it, because I'm pretty sure it has to be like a battle or an experience candy or something that makes it evolve. It can't just like happen out in the wild. Um, Gonna skip all the Wingle stuff, but here we go. Something's happening, right? No. What does Fracture need? I thought it was only level 48 for it to evolve. It's level 50 right now. Feels a bit weird. Maybe it needs to evolve one more time, or level up one more time. Because I think we're starting at level 50 with it. So maybe it really is the case that it just needs to level up one more time. So we'll keep going. Okay, I think we just got the level ups we need for both Wingle and Fracture, we're about to find out. Um, Guillotine seems sounds like an intense move. But uh, let's see, here comes Wingle. Wingle is evolving. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. And it, of course, becomes this big guy. Wingle evolved into Pelipper. Number 133, Pelipper is the water bird Pokemon, a water flying type. It protects its young and its beak. It bobs on waves, resting on them on days when the waters are calm. There we go, so that goes into 133. But that shouldn't be it, because Fracture is also evolving. There it is. Fracture, of, co of course, evolves into Haxorus, a very, very cool Pokemon. This one has been pretty powerful when we've run into it before. Number 157, Haxorus. The Axe Jaw Pokemon is a dragon type. It overwhelms enemies with its prized tusks, which are sharp enough to cut through a, a metal transmission tower in one strike. Oddly specific, but very cool. Okay, with those two out of the way, I don't know if there's any other evolutions waiting for us. Yes, there is, Dalev is evolving. Okay, we got a lot done here. This is fantastic. Okay, look at all these olives. Congratulations, your doll evolved into an Arbolova, Ar Arbolova? I don't know. Number 86, Arbolova. Olive Pokemon is a grass normal type. This Pokemon drives back enemies by launching its rich aromatic oil at them with enough force to smash a boulder. Very cool. And that goes right there. And that should be, no, it's actually four evolutions in one battle. Barboach is now evolving. Pretty crazy, right? So there we go, Barboach evolves into Whizcash. Whizcash is so cute. Number 169, Whizcash is a Whiskers Pokemon, a water ground type. Sighting Whizcash leaping from the water is believed to herald an earthquake. Wow. You can see there's still a lot more Pokemon that you know to sort of find and evolve, but we'll get there. We found a lot, or we added a lot to our Pokedex. That's gonna be it for that. But if we take a look at our Pokemon, we still need to get Grimer to level 30, that's 10 more levels, and Gotharita. And since it's our last Pokemon, let's save ourselves a little bit of time here by just using some more experience candy, you know? So I wanna go down to, I guess experience candy S might be able to get us up 10 levels if we use a good chunk of them. So let's just like use 10 of them and see how many levels we jump, all the way up to level 31. So, Sludge Bomb, we're just gonna skip on that. And then maybe use some of the Experience Candy M on Grimer again, this time using like six of them, let's see. It's still 36, so we just need a little bit more. Uh, let's see, use this item, Grimer. Let's use four of them. There we go, level 39, that's more than we need. So there we go, very, very nice. We don't need to learn Screech, but this should be the last evolution we'll bother with with leveling them up for now. 
But there we go, Grimer's so cute. Grimer's evolving, here we go. And of course, Grimer turns into the big goopy muck. Number 195, Muck is a sludge Pokemon poison type. It's so stinky. Muck's body contains ele toxic elements and any plant will wilt when it passes by. Oh man. But there we go. Put that right there. So many more Pokemon added to our Pokedex. But uh, for now, I feel like if there's anything else I wanted to do, right? It was going to be using stones and stuff. Before we get too carried away with that, let's get to a better location. We've been here for a lot today. I want to... Unless there's a Lucario back over here, like the map says there is, but you know how this works. Um, it doesn't seem like it, at least not for right now. Uh, what I would like to do then is just go back to um, the Academy so we can go do some lessons in just a moment, but then I'll go ahead and set up the, uh, the Evolution Stones for at least some of our Pokemon. So here's a collection of different Pokemon that should all need some kind of evolution stone to evolve, except for Tynamo. I need to level up Tynamo first and then move on to that. So if we go over here, we can go to Experience Candy L. I hope I can get him to level 48. We'll have to wait and see. But I'll use like a good like 11 of them. Let's see, that gets you to level 44. Oh my goodness, wow. Was that enough to evolve you? Yes, it is. So, oh I, I, yeah, I don't know why I thought it was 48. It's level 39, so that was more than enough. I got a little overboard, but that's okay. Tynamo is evolving, here we go. And boom, Tynamo evolves into Electric. Very cool looking Pokemon. Number 342, four, or 342. Electric, Eel, Elephish Pokemon, Electric. These Pokemon have a big appetite. When they spot their prey, they attack it and paralyze it with electricity. Very, very cool, and that's gonna go right there. So you can already see what we're evolving it into in just a moment. Let's remove, remove Crunch, but do that on your own time. <laughs> okay, so there's that done. Let's go to our evolution stones, wherever they may be. Here we go. So we have things like, you know, the fire stone, the thunder stone. Um, the first thing I need is a shiny stone to use on you. So hopefully this goes well. This is, of course, Fluette evolving. And it will evolve into a very pretty Florgus. So yep, Florgus added to our Pokedex number 147. The garden Pokemon is a fairy type. This is the yellow flower version. There's many different colors. This Pokemon battles by drawing forth the power of yellow flowers. It ruthlessly punishes anyone who tramples on flowering plants. Very cool to see it. We still need to find Flabebe. I have not seen it anywhere. And then we can, of course, use some different stones here. So next up, I want the Dusk Stone so that we can use that on our shiny Mistrevis. Figure we might as well evolve this and see what it looks like. So yeah, we got this green Mistrevis, um, or shiny. We got it in an earlier episode. It was very cool to get. But now it is evolved into a shiny Miss Magius. Very cool, I do like that shade of green too. So number 115, Miss Magius, the magical Pokemon, is a ghost type. It cries sound like incantations that torment the foe. It appears where you least expect it. Very, very fun. Boom, get that right there. So there's, you know, two Pokemon involved with these evolution stones, we've got plenty more. So uh, Magneton is our next one, and that needs a Thunderstone. What's weird is that I have this evolution already in our boxes, but it didn't count as like an entry to the Pokedex, I don't think, so we're just gonna try it here. All right, here we go, Magneton. Of course, it's the evolution of Magnemite. It evolves into whatever this monstrosity is, Magnezone. Very cool. So I'll register that number 211, Magnezone. The Magna area Pokemon is an electric steel type. Exposure to a special magnetic field changed Magneton's molecular structure, turning it into Magnezone. Cool, glad to have it. You can see the next one waiting for us right over there too in that Pokedex. Um, that is going to be getting a Firestone and using it on uh, Growlithe here. Seeing what its fire, fiery evolution will be. All right, there we go, very beautiful, I love the main. Congratulations, your Growlithe evolved into Arcanine. Looks so cuddly. Number 214, Arcanine, the legendary Pokemon is a fire type. Its magnificent bark conveys a sense of majesty. Anyone hearing it can't help but growl before it. Wow. 
And there we go, that goes right there. So we have one more Pokemon I wanna involve in today's episode. And that was, of course, well we just leveled up before, we need the Power Stone, the Thunder Stone for the Electric. What will that evolve into? All right, here we go. And this will definitely be the last one of today. We've evolved so many Pokemon though. I'm very proud with our progress, but look at this thing. So cool. Congratulations, your electric evolved into Electros. Number 343 Electros is an Elephish Pokemon and Electric type. It latches onto the prey with its sucker mouth, sinking in its fangs and shocking the prey with powerful electricity. Very nice. So there's that done. That goes right there. And we'll be all wrapped up with that. If we take a quick look at how our Pokedex has progressed, I think we had 295-ish Pokemon before this episode started. We now have 313, so quite the boost. And if we um, take a close look at it, we should have, oh no, wrong button, the also wrong button. Uh, we should have some extra little achievements now, at least for 303 times. So I wanna get to that. So congratulations, your Pokedex now contains 300 volumes. A lore ball. And of course, even more, we get the three comet shards. So we're making our way to more Pokedex this soon. But yeah, let's work on something a little bit different for the rest of today's episode, something I've been meaning to do for a while. I wanna clear out the remainder of the lessons that are available here at the school. So I think we just need to get through here and take a look. I wanted to sort of cram this in towards the end of an episode because I know that for some it could be a little bit boring just talking to the teachers a little bit, but we got a lot done today. It was a very productive episode, so I think it's fine that we can go and just get these lessons figured out. So interested in any classes? Yes, I am. So, I guess we'll start with biology too. And maybe we'll do like all the biology and then we'll do all the other stuff. I'm not really sure. You like biology with Mr. Jacques? Yes. Okay, our first lesson of the day. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. Did you all try using the ZR button to let your Pokemon out as I taught you out in our last class? Walking along with your Pokemon lets you see how unique and cute they all are. I'd also highly recommend picnics for when you want to spend some quality time together with, your po with the Pokemon in your party. You can get them all around the table to make sandwiches and play. It's really a lot of fun. If you want to learn more about making food, Mr. Shigaro, or Shigaro's class is the best place to go. Now, sometimes while you're enjoying a picnic with your Pokemon, you may find something very, very important in the basket next to your table. This very important something is what Pokemon are born from. Let's say it together. Uh, eggs. Phew, you all got it right. The very important something I'm talking about is a Pokemon egg. It's not clear where these eggs come from, but they're probably placed in the basket rather stealthily by Pokemon at the picnic. Walking around with an egg will help warm it, which allows it to hatch. Eggs won't warm up by sitting in boxes though. You need to have them in your party. And here's one more super important thing I'd like to remember you to remember about eggs. Pokemon entrust us with their eggs because they believe in us. So I sure would be happy to see you all being responsible parents for your little Pokemon eggs. <laughs> all right. Whoops, my most important point came right as the bell rang. Well, see you all next time, I guess. Well, that was definitely a cute one. Let's see what biology class three has for us. I'm just gonna get all these out of the way like straight away and we'll just work our way down. So class will soon begin. Yeah, these are definitely a lot of fun. I like hearing more about the world of Pokemon in this game specifically. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. I seem to remember teaching you all about the importance of eggs in our last class together. Ah, on that note, is everyone using their Pokedex? It registers Pokemon born from eggs as well as those encountered via other methods. So don't you worry about that. And uh, <laughs> just so you know, I'm the one who developed the Pokedex app. It was way before I started teaching here at the Academy though. Back then, I was a researcher. In fact, Director Clavel wasn't working in education at the time either. He was researching alongside me at the same facility. We got to research Pokemon together day in, day out. Those sure were fun times. I get yelled at all the time though. <laughs> Wait a second, have I gotten to this? Pretty sure I was talking about the Pokedex. Uh, anyway, today I'd like to teach you about catching Pokemon. As you all know, a great way to catch Pokemon more easily is to first lower its HP. But there's another way to up your chances of a successful catch. Can you guess what it is? 
Give the Pokemon a berry, inflict the Pokemon with a status condition, or prove you're stronger than the Pokemon. I think the second one. Wow, that's right, Zebra, great job. The correct technique for making Pokemon easier to catch is to inflict them with a status condition. Sleep is an especially effective status condition. It makes Pokemon drastically easier to catch. If you have a Pokemon that can use moves that put opponents to sleep, like Sleep Powder or Hypnosis, filling your Pokedex will be a cinch. There are other ways to improve your catch rate as well, like using Pokeballs specifically designed to be effective against certain Pokemon. Eating food that gives you catching power works too, or sneaking up on Pokemon from behind to catch them by surprise when you start a battle. If you're having trouble, you may want to make the rounds to the gym to get gym badges. Earning gym badges will make it easier to catch Pokemon of higher and higher levels. Please do come show me your Pokedexes once they start to fill up. Another day, another enjoyable class. Oh yeah, don't forget, our next class will be a test. Oh no. So I guess we have a biology test coming up. But yeah, of course we have Oink alone that puts Pokemon to sleep. That could be really helpful for catching Pokemon as well as the plenty of other status conditions that can be taken advantage of. But let's go and get ready for a test. I wonder if we get anything for the biology midterm. I mean, maybe there's a lot more of these classes than I thought. At the least, we could definitely get to these midterms with each one, and then maybe next episode we'll catch and evolve more Pokemon and get to the finals or something. Is that, that, that how it's gonna be? I'm not quite sure. Cause so I thought there would maybe just be like four or five each, but. Oh, hello everyone, today is our midterm exam. It sure feels good to fill in all those empty spaces on the answer sheet, doesn't it? Take your time and contemplate each question carefully. What button would you use to let a Pokemon out of its ball so that it can walk with you? Definitely the ZR button. Right there. Combine one letter and one number below to correctly say when, when and where eggs are found. During picnics, in your basket. So A2? A2. Interesting way to present the question. Which of the following is an effective way to warm up eggs? Going to sleep, walking around, battling. I think walking around. What will not make a Pokemon easier to catch? Giving them a berry, surprising them from behind, inflicting them with poison, or using certain kinds of Pokeballs? A. Giving them a berry. What will make it easier to catch a Pokemon of higher and higher levels? Certifications, LP, or gym badges? Definitely gym badges. This question won't affect your grade. How do you like the Pokedex? Is it easy to use? I'd be happy to hear your honest opinions. It's all right. I mean, it's, it's overall pretty easy to use. Um, I guess the market, my complaints are more so with the Pokemon box system. All right, everyone, time's up. I hope you all enjoyed tackling those questions. That last question was just something that I'm personally curious to know. Don't tell the director about it, okay? I'll grade these right away. I hope you're all looking forward to seeing how you did. All right, well, I think we did a pretty good job. I'm pretty certain we got them all right, so I guess we'll see eventually. In the meantime, I guess we should just focus on trying to get to the midterms uh, for the other classes. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exams, and four questions correct to pass the final exams. Let's see how you did on your biology test. You answered five out of five questions correctly. That's a passing score, congratulations. Mr. Jacques asked us to give this reward to any students who pass the exam. Obtain five experience candies S. Very cool, so we're getting some extra rewards. Keep doing your best. Well, I'm definitely interested in doing more classes, so for right now, let's try math two. You didn't, you'd like math with them this time? I definitely would. So let's get into this. It's still gonna take us a while to get through these, just focusing on getting to the midterms end. So we'll have our, our plate full here with different learning opportunities. Hello everyone, let's have a fun class today. Tell me, do you all enjoy shopping? Buying tasty bread or choosing new clothes, even just window shopping is so much fun. In today's class, I'd like to use shopping, one of my own favorite hobbies, mind you, to teach you all about math. I'm sure everyone here has visited a Pokemon at least once. They saw all sorts of Pokemon items. Pokeballs are one of the many useful items you can find there. They cost $200 each. Now then, I'd like you all to do some thinking with me here. One Pokeball is $200. If you had 2,000 and bought as many Pokeballs as you could afford, how many would you receive? Well, okay, this is where it gets tricky. It's typically 10, but every time you buy 10, you get one for free. So I think it's 11. That's correct, well done, Zebra. With 2,000, you can afford to purchase a maximum of 10 Pokeballs. However, if you purchase 10 or more of any of one Pokeball, 
you will also receive one Premier Ball, a special White Ball as a bonus. So the correct answer is in fact 11. It sure is nice to get a little bonus like that on a shopping trip, isn't it? Or that's more of a Pokemon fact than it is a math fact. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next class. I hope you're looking forward to it too. I definitely am. So that was our first quick math lesson. We still have more lined up for us, so we're just gonna hop straight back into it. Okay, here's math lesson three. Hello everyone, let's have a fun class today. Tell me, do you all enjoy fortune telling, horoscopes and the like? I think it feels great to read your horoscope and see that it says good luck is coming your way. So today, I'd like to teach you all math while focusing on the topic of luck. Perhaps you've seen the following phrase crop up during Pokemon battles before, a critical hit. When a Pokemon's attack lands is a critical hit, the damage it deals is increased by half. In other words, it does one and a half times as much damage as it normally would. It is truly luck that determines whether your Pokemon lands a critical hit or has one landed on it. This can cause a great upset in battle. Does anyone know what percent chance a Pokemon has of landing a critical hit? Um, I have no clue, but if I had to guess, maybe 4%? That is correct, well done, Zebra. All right, well, there we go, lucky guess. A chance of landing a critical hit is said to be one in 24, which figures to roughly 4.17%. The odds are more favorable for certain moves, though. Why, moves such as Stone Edge and Shadow Claw have about 12% chance. And some of them can hit criticals every time. You can also use a move called Focus Energy or an item known as Dire Hit. Both raise the critical hit ratio by two stages. That's a 50% chance to land a critical hit. It feels great to land a critical hit, but perhaps not so great to be struck by one. There's a surprising amount of mathematical probability hidden in Pokemon battles, you know? If you're able to do the calculations that'll swing luck in your favor, it may open the door for more strategic choices for you during battle. I guess so. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now, what a shame. Next class will be our fun midterm exam. I hope you'll all be looking forward to it. All right then, so that's exactly what we'll tackle right now. Our second midterm exam will be ready and waiting for us. Okay, so here comes our math midterm. Let's get going. It is interesting that we have these different quizzes and stuff. I didn't really know this was gonna be a thing. I figured it was just a few classes each and that'd be it. But there's, you know, some great information here if you're newer to Pokemon, it can help you learn a lot about it. All right, everyone, it's time to begin our midterm exam. I'm sure the fun experiences you all had in my class will serve you well as you answer. How much damage does Water Gun do when it hits a Fire-type Pokemon? It should be double damage, because it's super effective. How much damage does Razor Leaf do when it hits a Fire-type Pokemon? It should be half damage, because it's not so effective. If you spend 2,000 on as many $200 Pokemons, Pokeballs as possible, how many would you get? We get 11. What percent chance does a Pokemon usually have to land a critical hit? About 4%. How much damage does a move deal when it lands a critical hit? One and a half times as much. All right, everyone, time is up. Put your hands on your laps now. You were all concentrating so hard. I can't wait to see how you did. Do go and ask for your scores at the front desk and then take a nice break. Okay, so yeah, it's interesting that the, the front desk will tell us instead of the teacher, but we should be able to see our results as soon as we get back. It feels great to, t to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exams. And we got five out of five correctly. Awesome, so of course a passing score, it's a perfect score actually. This time asked us to give this reward to any students who pass the exam. More experience candies, very nice. So what is our next set of lessons waiting for us? It should be uh, history coming up next. Okay, our first history class lesson of the day. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday, it is now a part of history. Today, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. About 2,000 years ago, this region came under the rule of the Paldean Empire. Historical accounts describe the Paldean Emperor as being quite the dictator. This emperor also zealously believed the legend of the treasure that rests deep within Area Zero. I must mention that the civilians of our ancestors are not as developed as ours is today. People back then were far more likely to believe in mysterious legends, magic, and beings beyond human comprehension. 
In an attempt to gain the power to stand against Paldea's neighboring countries, the Emperor sent people in droves to join the hunt for the fabled treasure of Area Zero. Aha, perfect timing to make eye contact, young zebra. Answer me this. Approximately how many years ago is it that the Paldean Emperor began to rule this region? Well, they just mentioned about 2,000 years ago. <laughs> that is correct. You are a surprisingly clever one, aren't you? I see you're listening intensely to my lecture. The answer is about, to, about 2,000 years ago. That is when the great era of exploration began. However, it is said that not a single adventurer sent out by the Emperor ever reached the depths of Area Zero. Was it the punishing journey itself that barred their way, or perhaps some unknown creature? The resounding failure of this great era of exploration almost certainly heightened the air of mystery surrounding the crater. Oh, what I wouldn't give to explore Area Zero in the, its untouched state at that time. I suppose they can only hope for the swift invention of a time machine. Oh, is that the time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. We will unravel more of history's enigmas together next time. Well, next time is actually in just a moment. Okay, here's our next lesson. Greetings, my little students. Whatever you did yesterday is now a part of history. Today, we'll be, we will continue to unravel the marvels that history has presented to us. As you should remember from our last class, Area Zero's great era of exploration began about 2,000 years ago. This era lasted for approximately 1,000 years, but not a single soul was able to venture all the way to the deepest reaches of Area Zero. Having poured much of its human and financial resources into the exploration of Area Zero for so long, the Paldean Empire f fell into decline. 200 years later, or 800 years ago, the Empire and its surrounding nations united into one entity. This was the formation of Paldea as we know it today. Ah yes, this very academy where you are now filling your young minds with knowledge was also apparently established at that time. In fact, this school building, though certainly having undergone repairs through the years, is just as it was when it was built so long ago. This very structure is a piece of history. Ah, things of old are truly splendid. I would certainly prefer it not to have the Pokeball portion, though a relatively new addition. All right, aha, perfect time to make eye contact, young zebra. Let's see if you've been listening to my lecture. Tell me approximately how many years ago was this academy of ours established? 800 years ago. Correct, I see the look of concentration on your face was indeed just that. I ate nothing more than when a student only pretends to listen. This academy was constructed only uh, exactly 805 years ago, to be precise. In other words, your academy here is 805 years old. At the time, it offered state-of-the-art facilities and a uniquely innovative curriculum. As such, people used to say, those seeking knowledge need look no further than the grapes of Paldea. That's right, they were referring to Uva Academy. It is said that this proverb of sorts was even used outside of the Paldea region. Oh, is it that time already? I must have gotten swept up in filling your minds with knowledge. This ends today's lesson. Our next class will be our midterm exam. Bring the wonders of history to the forefront of your minds in preparation. Yep, we'll be sure to study, keep all the facts in our heads so that we can take on this midterm exam. This will be our third one. We still have plenty more to go after this, of course, but we're making good progress for sure. So I'll talk to you again. History midterm. Yep, history with Miss Ryfort. Let's see for ourselves what questions we get. It should be pretty similar, just basically the questions we answered in class. We just need to answer again. With that being said, the first one or two questions, I won't really know, at least off the top of my head, because we did them previously. Greetings, my little students. It is time for our midterm examination. Summon your historical knowledge from the dark recesses of your minds and answer the questions. What is the name of the geological formation in the center of the Paldea region? Of course, that is the Greek crater of Paldea. What was long believed to the rest to rest in the depths of Area Zero? A mysterious Pokemon, a school, or treasure? Treasure. How many years ago did the Paldean Empire begin to rule this region? Approximately 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 years ago? 2,000. How many years ago was the Academy built? 805, 806, or 807 years ago? 805. Those seeking blank need look no further than the grapes of Paldea. Power, courage, or knowledge? Of course, knowledge. Your time is up. Put your writing utensils down. That last question was a freebie. Even the least capable of you surely padded your score there. I sincerely hope you did, anyway. 
So ends our midterm examination. You may ask for your scores at the school's front desk. All right, well, that was a fun one. We could actually keep up with that pretty easily. So far, we've gotten every question right on every midterm, but will it stay that way as we try out more of them in the future? I guess that's the big question. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exams and four questions correct to pass the final exams. And we got five out of five. Exactly what we wanna see. Of course, we'll get more experience candy as a reward and we'll move on to our next set of lessons, which will be waiting for us right here. Now that history is done, it's all about languages. Okay, well here's our first language class of the day with Salvatore. My dear friends, how are you all today? Feeling absolutely fantastic, I hope? It's time for Salvatore's language lesson. I do not know how to pronounce that. Are you ready, everyone? You can answer with yes or we. Uh, yes. So super. In our last class, I believe I taught you all how to say thank you in other languages, right? In la cour, oh my gosh, I can't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Today's class, we will learn about a certain word sure to make people happy when you use it in your travels abroad. What word do you ask? Well, you, you'll have to guess. Well, it's you. How she? Well, no, can anyone tell me what those mean? I mean, the first one sort of clears me, clues me in on uh, <laughs> help, delicious, I think. Whoa, correct, it's a super. I knew I could count on easy bread. All those words mean delicious. Using the local word for delicious at markets or restaurants is sure to get a big sourire, a smile, that is, from whoever you're talking to. Handle the communication go more smoothly, I guarantee it. People love it when someone says the cuisine of their homeland is delicious. Who wouldn't be happy to receive such a compliment? And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. The first step to smooth communication is, a, is to compliment the person you're talking to. After all, it's not very likely that a compliment would put someone in a bad mood. This doesn't only apply to people in other regions either. It's the same for all of you too. You can put this tip to use with your classmates. How about you all try complimenting each other after class? I bet it will make for an ambience plus sympathique a more friendly atmosphere. That's all for today. See you all prochain cour. Next lesson, that is adios, matinee. All right. That's our first one. I put the less, the language lessons are the ones I'm not the strongest at. You know, put me in the math class, okay. Language, I'm, I'm gonna have to take my time a little bit. Okay, so let's go back into it though. We're gonna do another language study here before we get to the midterm with Mr. Salvatore here. My dear friends, how are you all today? You certainly look fantastic. It's time for another one of Salvatore's language lessons. Are you ready? I think so. Uh, <clears throat> Hasta vous pre? I think that's how it is. Are you ready? Oui, oh, let's do oui. Tres bien, very good. My lessons are not a one-way street, no, no. I am très triste when no one speaks up. Very sad, that is. In our last class, I believe I taught you all how to say delicious in the languages, right? In la cour de... That one is... I cannot. <laughs> I don't even know how to begin. Today's class, we will learn about a very special phrase that you can put to use when the time is just right. Does anyone know what these phrases mean? Um, if I had to guess... I mean, probably time to eat? I think time to eat. Maybe? Oh, Zebra. No, no, we can't have you eating anyone. That's a with well, waste response, a wrong answer. These three phrases you know, I think. Why? Because they're all quite famous ways to say, I love you, oh, okay. Oh my, have I embarrassed you all, my friends? What timid little garçons, it feels so shy boys and girls, that is. Oh my gosh. It's so very important to express your feelings about things to others, you know. This is especially true for positive emotions. If you get married someday and argue with your spouse over some silly thing, all you have to do is apologize and say, I love you. And all will be well, that is. I should know. Why, just last week I had a big argument with my femme, my dear wife, that is. But I was quick to say I'm sorry, and all was well. And now, apropos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. It's best to be quick to apologize when you have an argument with someone. That goes for your family's friends and your crushes. I know you can do it, I believe in you. 
Our next class will be the midterm exam. Be sure to review what we learned in all of our lessons so far. Adios. All right then, so we did okay there. I did get the question wrong, but you know, it's better to get it wrong here than of course on the midterm exam that we're about to take. That's what the classes are for, to make those mistakes so we can understand better later. So, languages midterm is coming up with Mr. Salvatore. For better or for worse, we're going in. And hopefully we get all five answers right again. We can continue our perfect streak here of midterms. Star student getting every midterm fully correct, but I guess we'll have to wait and see if that's truly the case. Today we take our midterm exam. Relax, that is, and do your best. Okay. As if we pray, are you ready? Let's begin. Gracias, arigato, merci, and zuzu, I don't know, uh, are all the same meaning. What is it? Thank you, goodbye, or good night. This one, of course, is thank you. What? Which of the following means delicious? B. That one's pretty easy. Which of these phrases doesn't belong? Time to eat. Did not mean that. <laughs> when speaking with a person, what is the first step to smooth communication? <laughs> um, I think the first one, complimenting them. What is your beloved teacher's name? Theodore Leon Leonor Salvatore Salvador. I think it's Salvatore, not Salvador. Uh, guess we'll find out. Yep, Salvatore. Says Finney, time is up. Poses vos stylos, put down your pens, that is. I hope that was easy enough for you, especially that the near question, that, that last question. I'm sure you all did great. Bravo, my friends. You can check your scores at the school's front desk. All right, well, sort of glad that one's out of the way. I think we got all five questions correct, but we will see in just a moment. Whenever we load back in. We still have three more classes, I think, to go. Okay, so let's see your results. Five out of five. Very nice, so we of course get a passing score and our experience candies. But we're not quite done. More classes are on the schedule. This time it's battle studies. See, we have three more classes to get to midterms with. Let's try battle studies for now with Miss Dendra. This is one of my more favorite ones, I think. So let's get into there and sort of see how it goes. Another day, another round of battle study. Osu, let's get right to it. Is everyone excited about the treasure hunt? It's always a great adventure. You get to take on gyms, go to new places, and run all over the place with your partner Pokemon. And while you're running around out there, I bet you'll come across some big shining crystals fairly often as well. These crystals are actually collections of terrestrial energy that's seeped up out of the ground. You can check out these crystals to battle Terra Pokemon with your friends or other trainers in a group of four. We call those battles Terra Raid Battles. The Terra Pokemon you'll face off against in Terra Raid Battles are crazy tough. They sometimes act differently than regular Pokemon, so you'll need to be on your guard. Luckily, trainers can also use a special action in Terra Raid Battles. It's called cheering, and there are three different cheers you can use. The first cheer is go all out. It boosts the, the attack and special attack of all ally Pokemon. The second is hang tough. This one boosts the defense and special defense of all ally Pokemon. And the third, well, let's see if you can guess. This cheer restores HP for all ally Pokemon. What do you think it is? Um, it's either Heal Up, Wham Bam Potion, or Explosive Healing Wave. I think just Heal Up. I feel like it's a lot more in line with the other cheers. And there we go. That's right, maybe I should make you the battle teacher, huh, new kid? I mean, I don't know if we're that new anymore. The third and final cheer is Heal Up. It's a real powerhouse with the ability to both restore HP and cure status conditions. You can cheer up to three times during a single terror raid battle. Also, cheering up uses up a turn in battle, so you won't be able to have your Pokemon use any of their moves when you cheer. In conclusion, try everything at your disposal. If nothing seems to be working, try cheering on your allies. Providing support for your team can sometimes open up a new realm of possibilities. Oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some more hands-on practice to really drive the point home. But I guess we're out of time. Class is over for now, take care you little rascals. All right, well there's our first lesson of battle studies for today, learning about the terror raid battles and such, which we've gone on so many of those, so we know all about it, but don't worry, because we'll just do another lesson now. Maybe this will be a more interesting topic, if that one wasn't. And this will be the last one before the, uh, the exam. So, more battle studies with Miss Dendra is coming up. 
But we've made some great progress through this. You know, we'll get through the rest of it the next time we're here for sure. And here we are again. Everybody back out to the field. Another day, another round of battle study. Let's get right to it. Last time, we learned about terror raid battles. Did any of you have a chance to try them out? Terror Pokemon are super strong, and the more difficult ones will use an even tougher tactic that you'll need to deal with. I'm talking about their Terror Shield. What happens while Pokemon has its Terror Shield up, you ask? Well, it takes way less damage for one. It has a big effect on morale, too. When trainers see that shield go up, they feel doomed, but there's no way to win the battle. So, here's a question for you. If the Pokemon you're battling puts up a puts up its terror shield, what should you do? Close your eyes and give in, call your parents, or terrestrialize and attack it. Definitely this one. That's right, you're a regular terror raid battle master, aren't you, new kid? Regular attacks don't work so well against Pokemon that have their terror shield up. But having your Pokemon terrestrialize in an effective method to overcome that issue. A terrestrialized Pokemon will do more damage to shield Pokemon, especially if it uses moves that match its terror type. Dealing enough damage to a Pokemon with its Terror Shield up can destroy the, the shield and break the Pokemon's stance. This means that it's important to properly time your Terrastalizing and Terror Raid battles. In conclusion, as I say, fight fire with fire and Terra Pokemon with Terra Pokemon. Be sure to work together with your Pokemon to smash through your opponent's Terror Shield. Aw oh man, I was just about to suggest we do some hands-on practice to really drive the point home, but I guess we're out of time once again. Next class will be our midterm exam. Aim for a perfect score. All right, so that's exactly what we'll do because we've done it every time so far. I want to keep racking up those perfect scores. And this one, I think we just simply know enough about the game that it should be fine. Some of the other ones were, you know, like the, the, the language one. You need to pay attention to it if you haven't played the game because, like, you know, the languages are just languages. But Battle Studies Midterm should be more familiar to us for sure because we've been playing this game a lot. The class will be, begin soon. Don't be tardy. Sorry to all of you who went to the schoolyard but first before finding the right room. I guess we can do our test in the classroom, at least. It might be hard to write down your answers out on the field. All right, time to put on your game faces and do battle with those test sheets. The higher a Pokemon special defense, the less damage it takes from, I think, special attacks. So, let's go ahead and choose that one. Which of the following has no effect on the move's damage? The move's type, the move's power, the move's name. Definitely the move's name. How many trainers are on a Terror Raid battle team? Three, four, or eight? Four. What is an effective method for breaking an opponent's Terror Shield? Switching Pokemon, Terrestrializing and Attacking, or Cheering? Well, Terrestrializing and Attacking is our best option. What is Mr. Dendra's favorite type? I'm going to guess Fighting. Time's up, put your pencils down. I saw you giving it everything you got. I'm sure you all got the perfect scores. Well done, everyone. You can ask for your scores at the front desk. Well, let's hope that last one was correct. I'd imagine it is. But I guess we'll see in just a moment. Pretty cool so far, though. Feels great to have a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's see. Skipping all this text, because we've already read it so many times. But five out of five, correct. Awesome. So that means we only have two more classes left. We can get that done no problem, right? So our next one waiting for us here in the classes is going to be what? Right down here, art classes. Very cool, you'd like to take art with Mr. Hassel? Yes, I would. This is one of the Elite Four members as well. We've battled them before. Uh, let's give it a go. All right, well, here's Mr. Hassel. I love that Eevee picture in the back, and the ditto too. Hello, class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. In our previous class, we discovered or discussed what beauty is, which might have been a little boring for you. So today, I thought I would mix things up a little to pique your interest in art. Allow me to introduce our special guest. We got a little Gibble. This is Professor Gibble, the assistant lecturer for today. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us. Of course, the quick terrestrialization here. What kind will it be? Whoa, I think it's grass? Looks like it. Grass terrestrialize Gibble. As some of you may already know, a Pokemon can Terrastalize if you use a Terra Orb. Normally, Professor Gibble would be of the Dragon type, but by Terrastalizing, it succeeded in changing its type. 
So class, what type do these lovely glistening flowers above Professor Gibble's head represent? Uh, the grass type. Excellent, Zebra. Full marks for you. These beautiful flowers blooming above Professor Gibble's head show that it has now become a grass type. The shape of the Terra Jewel above a Pokemon's head depends on the Pokemon's Terra type. To summarize, if an opponent's Pokemon terrestrializes during battle, observe a Pokemon's Terra Jewel closely to see which type it has become, and choose effective moves accordingly. It is my sincere hope that today's lecture will help you all achieve beautiful victories. The terrestrial phenomenon is indeed a fascinating and deep subject to discuss. That is it for today, class. Thank you, Professor Gibble, for your help. Aw. I definitely like Professor Gibble. Seems to be a nice one. Yeah, it's interesting how this is sort of just learning more about the game, but in artistical ways? I'm not quite sure. It's a little bit subjective in that way, right? Just like actual art. So let's go to art number three. This will be the last one before the midterm. So let's see what Mr. Hassel has to say this time. Here we are. Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. So I've been told my, in my that my previous lecture about the Trassel phenomenon was very well received. Thank you all for your kind words. In fact, Ms. Dendra specifically requested that I impart even more battle knowledge to my students. So I've decided that today we will take another le look at how a Pokemon can terrestrialize. Professor Gibble's back. And of course, here's Professor Gib Gibble to help us. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you'd be so kind as to terrestrialize for us. So it'll be grass again? No, this time it's ice. Now, what do we have here? Last class we saw grass type terrestrializing, but this time we have something of a different shape. Observe, a terra jewel resembling a snowflake. Its dendritic shape is stunning to behold. It's a little chilly standing so close to it. So class, what type, or what terra type do you imagine this jewel might represent? Of course, the ice type. Excellent, Zebra, full marks for you. The reason there's a snowflake shining above Professor Gibble's head is simple. It is now an ice type. And because Professor Gibble is currently the ice type, ice type moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind, usually they would deal quadruple damage to Gibble. Now, here's some trivia about snowflakes. While snowflakes come in very different shapes and sizes, most are classified as hexagons. Just think of it, snowflakes far from the sky, taking similar shapes without anyone sh sh saying they must. Do you not feel the great mystery of nature, the beautiful enigma we live in? <clears throat> ah, this is a bit of a tangent, but Mr. Jacques' glasses are also hexagonal, aren't they? I almost forgot to mention that you can change a Pokemon's Terra type at the Treasure Eatery located in Medali. Oh wow, that's really cool. I think we did know that though. Uh, though I must say, the cook there is a little prickly. You'll need to get on our good side if you want our help. All right. Now, come prepared for next class, because it is time for your midterm examination. Thank you for today, Professor Gibble. All right, so let's get that midterm going. Okay, so here is our midterm. I do hope you're all ready, because it is time for your midterm exam. Focus and do your best. And begin. What is the name of the gemstone that glows over a Pokemon's head when it terrestrializes? The Terra Jewel, the Terra Rock, or the Terra Stone? Um, actually, I don't know this one. Probably the Terra Jewel. When the answer to a question one is in the shape of flowers, what does it represent? The grass type. I think it was actually Terra Stone, now that I think about it. What shape are most snowflakes classified as? Um, it was a hexagon or octagon? I think an oct, no. Did he say hexagon? I think it was hexagon. Um, where is the eatery that allows you to change a Terra type? That was in Medali. What well, makes something beautiful? It's shaping color, the eye of the beholder, I don't know, there's no correct answer. I feel like it's actually D. There's no correct answer. Time's up. That's it for today's test. Pencils down, please. I would rather not have students worry about passing or failing in my art class, but tests are tests after all. Anyway, good work everyone. You can check your results at the front desk. So I might have gotten four out of five correct for this one. All of the way, it's enough to pass though, no matter what, so. We should still be able to get our rewards and move forward. So we'll see in just a moment. 
Okay, so three questions were all we need this time. Five out of five, never mind, we got it right. Awesome. So we get five experience candies S, and we are going to uh, try our last set of classes here. This time it should be the home ec classes. Very cool, with Mr. Saguaro. So here's Saguaro. Put away your phones, it is time to begin class. In our last class, I believe we talked about the effects you can get from fooding on your picnics. You can receive real powers and even restore HP for all the Pokemon in your party. It is truly convenient means of healing your Pokemon. Unfortunately, as I'm sure you are aware, it is not suited to be used to, to, for use in battles when you cannot make food or when you wish to restore your HP quickly. It is times such as those you should make use of healing items, such as potions, which you can purchase from Pokemarts or the school store. Healing items are immediately effective and can be used any time that you can open your bag. They are, however, consumed after one use. Potions restore 20 HP, Super Potions restore 60 HP, and Hyper Potions restore 120 HP. The pricier the item, the more HP it will restore. Keep in mind how much money you have when you are stocking up on these items. However, unforeseen happenings are an inextricable part of traveling from place to place. Imagine, if you will, the following scenario. You find yourself with an injured Pokemon, but you have no potions, you are out of sandwich ingredients, and there are no Pokemon centers nearby. Tell me, Master Zebra, what should your, your search for when in a perilous situation with no way to heal your Pokemon? A place with water, a teacher, items on the ground. I would figure items on the ground. Perfectly correct, Master Zebra. I see you are well-learned in survival techniques. If you see something shiny on the ground, it is actually an item that has been dropped there. You may be able to find a restorative item, such as an Orin Berry or a potion, in this way. You can use the R button to, to send out your Pokemon to pick up such items as well. And then there are berries, of course. Berries, by the way, aren't like the items from shops. If you let your Pokemon hold one, it will decide on its own when to eat the berry during battle. Letting your Pokemon decide it's this timing for yourself can be quite interesting. At any rate, if you find yourself in need of healing, I suggest you to look around for shining items on the ground. If you can't find the items, there are other methods you may employ for healing your, your, ah, but I see the bell demands that topic. Wait, our time together has come to an end for today, but I bid you all for a while. All right, well, there's our first one. We got one more to go before the midterm. Okay, lesson number two. Put away your phones. It's time for to begin class. In my last class, I taught about HP restoration. However, after class, I was asked by several of you about power points, commonly known as PP. When a Pokemon loses all of its HP, it faints and can no longer battle. What then happens to a Pokemon when it loses all of its power points? Um, it can't use its moves. Perfectly correct, Master Seeper. Perhaps you know this from first-hand experience? I suppose so. When a Pokemon runs out of power points, it can no longer use its moves. However, each move has its own store of power points, so you can mitigate power points lost by using a variety of moves rather than just one move repeatedly. If a Pokemon loses all of its power points for all of its moves, it will only be able to use Struggle, an action that also damages the Pokemon that uses it. In order to avoid this predicament, power points can be restored at a Pokemon Center along with HP. Items such as Ethers and Max Ethers can also be used to restore power points. Be careful not to confuse potions with Ethers in the heat of battle. However, Ethers are not sold at shops, so you should be able to use them judicially if you find them. The stronger the move, the lower its maximum power points. Do not do not waste uses of these moves unless you wish to quickly run out of power points. It is important to find balance in a Pokemon set of moves. As you can see, HP isn't the only thing you must keep an eye on while adventuring with Pokemon. I hope that you will take all take care to ensure that your partner Pokemon can perform at their best as you each engage in the treasure hunt. Our time together has come to an end for today. Our next meeting will be an examination day. Be sure to review well in preparation. All right, so let's do our last exam of today. Okay, here comes our last one. The time has come to test how well you all have learned here in my class. Let's begin before the information simmering in your brains from a last minute cram session fades. Which is not an effect of a picnic meal? HP restoration, curing poison, increasing speed, or gaining meal powers? I think increasing speed would probably be the right answer. Which of the following affects the kinds of meal powers received from a particular meal? Fillings and condiments, number of people eating, or the color of utensils? Huh. 
So which of the following effects the kinds of meal powers receive? Uh, I'm sort of confused about the question, but uh, I think fillings and condiment. Okay, yeah, yeah. Which of these berries can restore the Pokemon's HP? Um, an Orin berry, for sure. Le Leandro wanted his Pokemon to decide on its own when to use its item in battle, so he gave it an Orin berry. This will work as he hopes, I guess? Well, well, decide on its own when to use the item in battle, so he gave it an Orin berry. Yeah, that would work, because it would just use it when it needs it. True. If a move runs out of power points, it can no longer be used. If a Pokemon runs out of power points for all of its moves, it can only sit there in frustration. Boss, it gets struggle, was it? There's like one more move it can use. The time for answering questions has come to an end. Please stop writing. I hope you're all able to give the examination everything you had. Please remember to ask for your scores at the front desk before leaving for the deck. Feels great to have the test out of the way, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So let's see, were we able to get every lesson done five out of five questions? Yes, we were. So, so far we got a perfect mid midterm exam score, but can we make that happen for the final exams later on? I sure hope so. So next episode, maybe we'll get started with that, at least sometime soon, we definitely will. But we've also made some great progress with our Pokedex in today's episode. There's still so much more we can do in this game if we're truly after it. So definitely let me know. But in the meantime, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.